Hi, in this video we're going to look at identifying supported HTTP methods with Burp Suite. Due to misconfiguration, some websites support additional HTTP methods that can be useful to an attacker in a number of ways. They might enable an attacker to perform destructive actions like modifying sensitive data or uploading malicious files, maybe bypass flawed access controls and other weak defences, or disclose additional information about the website and its infrastructure. Some websites may ignore the method completely and respond in the same way even if you specify an arbitrary or non-standard method. This might enable you to bypass WAFs and weak input filters as well as defences against cross-site attacks. Sending an options request sometimes causes the server to tell you which methods it supports, but the information can be misleading or incomplete. The most reliable approach for identifying supported HTTP methods is to send a request using each potential method and check the responses. This can be time consuming, but you can automate this using Burp Intruder. Once you have mapped your target website, the simplest approach is to test a single endpoint. Supported methods are often fairly consistent across the website, as they are usually the result of server level configuration and the default configuration of backend frameworks. There can always be exceptions though. To enumerate supported methods on a single endpoint, first identify a relevant request, such as this request for the homepage of one of the Web Security Academy labs. Highlight the request method, right-click and send the request to Intruder. In Burp Intruder on the Positions tab, because we highlighted the request method before sending it to Intruder, the method should have been highlighted and automatically marked as a payload position. We'll keep the attack type set to Sniper. Then when we go to the Payloads tab, under Payload Sets, select Simple List. Under the Payload Settings, add a list of HTTP methods you want to test. If you're using Burp Suite Professional, you can use the Add From List dropdown and choose the built-in HTTP Verbs word list. In Burp Suite Community, you'll need to add your list manually and make sure you include an arbitrary, non-existent method to see how the server responds. Click Start Attack. When the attack is finished, review the responses for any interesting behaviour. Make sure you take a close look and don't just rely on the HTTP status code. This can be misleading. You may also want to enumerate methods for multiple endpoints, as you may encounter inconsistent behaviour in responses to the same methods on different parts of the site. This can occur when websites are maintained by multiple teams of developers who may configure their own custom request handling. You might also find that specific endpoints behave differently. To do this, go to Target, Sitemap, right-click on a host, and choose Copy URLs in this host. Send a GET request for the target host to Burp Intruder. In Burp Intruder, go to the Positions tab and choose Attack Type Cluster Bomb. We can then select the request method and click Add to create the first payload position and then select the request path and click Add again to create a second payload position. On the Payloads tab, for the first position, select Simple List and add a HTTP Verbs word list. If we're using Burp Suite Professional, we can choose Add From List and select the built-in HTTP Verbs word list. Now set the details for the second payload position by going to the Payload Sets and switching to Payload 2. Under Payload Settings, click Paste to add the list of URLs you copied from the sitemap. Under Payload Processing Rules, click Add. 
Create a match and replace rule that replaces the scheme and hostname of your URLs with an empty string. Then, under Payload Encoding, deselect the URL Encode These Characters checkbox to prevent the forward slash characters from being encoded. Click Start Attack. Again, once the attack is completed, you can review the responses for interesting behaviour. Remember, don't just rely on the HTTP status code, it can be misleading.